What's cracking people? I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV and in today's video I'm going to be doing something and getting involved in something that I've been a fan of for a long time but never really get much chance to talk about on the channel. If you've been following Slimehouse for like the past year and a half or something like that, you've probably seen me do a lot of toy making or toy design or toy production on the videos but something else that I'm a massive fan of that I never really get too much opportunity to talk about is wargaming, old school wargaming and in particular old hammer as some people now like to call it which I think is a really cool word so I call it that as well. <laughs> And I have covered it sporadically in bits and bats over the years. If you look around my studio, I've got lots of boxed old hammer and stuff. I've got a big old hammer collection. I like to go to events when I can. I also love to go to Warhammer World and that kind of thing. But I've never been able to find like a good natural way to incorporate it into the stuff that I do here at the channel, which like I said at the start is mostly toy creation and toy design and toy production. Now if you watch any of the toy making videos that I do or the action figure creation videos and that kind of thing, you'll know that a lot of the time, although I do like Safube and resin toy making and production runs and that kind of thing, something else that I really love to do is make one-off prototypes. Kind of taking IPs that either never had an old school toy release or something that's new that I think would look really cool in that old 80s slash 90s style, taking a lot of inspiration from Playmates toys and Kenner action figures and that kind of thing. I've done it a lot with old movie characters and game characters, but something that I've never done it with is Warhammer characters and, and characters from the world of 40k. And because I'm always thinking of potential ideas to play with within that premise, recently I was thinking to myself how cool would it have been if in the 90s Warhammer had licensed out their IP to a toy company like Trendmasters to create a line of action figures for kids to play with, like the 90s Space Marine toy line that never was. And so that's exactly what I've done, and I'm going to show you how I did it in today's video. I'm going to show you the design process, the printing process, the painting process, everything. The whole shebang. So if that sounds like a bit of you, as always, sit back, make sure you're comfy, and get yourself ready for a brand new episode of what I've been calling recently Retro Reimagined, here on Slimehouse TV. Let's do this. So before I get fully stuck into anything Old Hammer related, I think it's important for me to let you know, if you don't already know, the difference between Old Hammer and the stuff that's out in shops and video games today. So what I've got here are a bunch of old White Dwarf magazines. This is the official monthly publication for Games Workshop Warhammer models. It's been going since the late 70s and I love getting these out. I've got lots of them, a bunch of these box folders full, and a load of other random codexes and related ephemera. And honestly getting these spread across a table and just flicking through them is such a good time for me. And I could do several videos going through these books and looking at all the cool articles in them, the lore and the model showcases inside. But for this project, I was looking specifically for old school Space Marines. So nowadays, in many ways, they have changed up the look of the Space Marines quite a lot, and I'll be showing you some examples of that shortly. But these ones here are how they looked throughout the 80s and the 90s at Games Workshop, and although the colour schemes for the most part are still kind of the same, Ultramarines are still blue, Blood Angels are still red, back then everything just looked a lot more vibrant. So in terms of the colour scheme and the vibe of my Space Marine action figure, that's something that I definitely wanted to keep in mind. So if we quickly just take a look at some actual miniatures now, I can show you how different Space Marines are nowadays to the type that I want to be making a toy of in today's video. So this big one on the left, that's a modern day Space Marine. They call these Primaris Marines. Basically, in the Warhammer story lore, these are Space Marines that have been surgically and genetically enhanced to be bigger and stronger than a regular one, but it was basically a way of Games Workshop being able to make a bigger and more detailed model of the classic Space Marine without making a bunch of the smaller ones that they created before it useless in the game or not canon anymore. So generally if you buy anything Space Marine nowadays, this is probably the one that it's going to look like. Here's another example, and as you can see, the one on the right, the classic looking Marine, which are now called the Firstborn Marines, is quite a bit smaller and stockier, a little bit more chunky, a little less refined, you could even say a bit more goofy looking, but that's the way that I like my Space Marines. And I do appreciate the newer look, it does look awesome, but the Firstborn Marine is my personal favourite. So obviously that's the type of marine that I wanted to go for for my 90s style retro action figure, an armour type that's now known as the old school 2nd edition Mark 7 Aquila armour. Now there's some even earlier Space Marine designs that I love as well that you might have seen before, with more pointed faced helmets that are sometimes known as beaky marines. These have even more of a simple design and have some cool studded shoulder pads and stuff and I really do love this look, I think it's very iconic. But for the sake of me trying to design a 90s style action figure with this project, I thought it were better to stick to that second edition look, because if this was genuinely a toy line that were released in the 90s, it would probably be that armour that they would use as the template for it. At least that's what I think. 
Now, when I first got this idea, as I always do, I just started pulling around some shapes and trying to get something that looks like a Space Marine in my head, what I thought a Space Marine action figure would look like. And for this, I just use an app on my iPad called Nomad. It's not like an expensive app or anything like that. It's like £20, but it's what I use for everything. And I was just tinkering around with it in the background, no real rush or deadline or anything like that. I was just doing it between other jobs, working on it for like a week and a half. But then I started playing Space Marine 2, and I thought, you know what? If there was ever a good reason to release a Space Marine action figure, now feels like the perfect time to do it. Not only that, but then my friend Dan does was coming over to stay for a few days because we were going to be filming some stuff for his channel. And I thought, you know what? That would be really cool to get Dan involved. He's an amazing painter. He's an amazing crafter. And if he got one of these and painted it, he would do a very different job to what I did. Obviously, I'm going to be painting mine like a, an old school action figure, big, bold colours and stuff. He comes much more from that like wargaming and crafting background and stuff. So if he paints one, he's going to be doing all the dry brushing and that kind of thing. So I thought, yeah, that would be awesome. I'll get this finished while Dan's here. So at this point, it's like 3 a.m. in the morning. It's the night before. I'm sat just tinkering away because I have got the thing kind of roughed out, but it's not in a position. It's got no battle damage. If you know about me and my toys, I like to put scuffs and marks and battle damage all over them and it had none of that. So I had to texture it. He also had no weapons. I had to put the articulation in it and things because I like mine to have articulation and things to move on the bodies like a toy would. So yeah, I really had my work cut out to try and get this all finished like a few hours before Dan were going to be getting on his train and getting to Sheffield. Luckily though, I did get everything finished and by the time he got here and we'd gone off and done all the filming for his channel and stuff, I thought, yeah, do you know what? Let's get one on print and we'll get one ready for Dan to paint. Because I wanted him to paint one while he was here in the studio. Now what happened with that is a whole different story and I'm going to talk about it later on in the video but basically what's important for the sake of keeping this story moving now is that I did get it all completed, I made his weapons, I gave him a chainsaw and a bolt gun and that kind of thing and I got it all looking the way that I wanted it to and got it ready for printing. Although this one was a little bit more complex than the other toys that you will have seen me make on this channel before so yeah let me show you how that went down. a couple of late nights, once I had the thing all sculpted and I was happy with how it were looking, it was off to the 3D printing stage. Now 3D printing this thing was a whole beast of its own that I'll talk about a little bit more later, but eventually I did get one that came out good. Something that made this one a little bit more complex than usual as well is that I chose to print this thing in lots of separate different parts. So I had to print it on two different printers and also because I wanted some parts of it to be a bit more flexible than others, I printed it in two different types of resins as well. And I went through my usual process of getting everything washed in some IPA and then removing all the parts from the printing plates, getting them soaked in some warm water so that I could easily remove all the supports off them. And once that were all done and everything were dry, it was enough to get them all cured in the UV curing machine. Next up was my least favourite part of prototype toy making, the sanding stage. And although this isn't a stage that always takes a long time, when it comes to a figure like this that has to be really smooth on all surfaces, it can be kind of annoying, because I've spent a lot of time trying to make this sculpt as perfect as possible in the sculpting program, but then when you print something like this, you also have to put supports all over it, and it's hard to hide any of those support marks in a figure that has to be really smooth like this, so I did have to spend a bit of time on this one with the sanding sticks and the Dremel, getting it all as perfect as I could. Luckily though, I had my friend Alex's live stream on in the background from Alex52 Miniatures, an awesome wargaming and painting channel that I definitely recommend checking out if you like that kind of thing, and one of my favourite personal channels to kick back and work to. So I've given it a really good sand, using both the sanding sticks and some different grades and then the Dremel with a nice buffing cup, just getting rid of all the support marks and anything that was just like not quite smooth, and I've got it to a point now where it's ready for some priming. One of the things that I'm really happy with so far as well with this figure is how satisfyingly smooth his bolt gun fits in his hand. Now, normally when I do figures, I just like make a pole like that with a hole that it slots in. It's the way that I've done most of the weapons with all of my figures, but I really wanted to like step outside my comfort zone with this figure and just try something a little bit different and have something that looks a little bit better than just something pushed in a hole like that. So I made his hand able to hold his gun and I'm really happy with how it's turned out and how it's looking. You might notice as well that I've not fitted this guy together yet either. 
driver. And the reason for that is at the minute I'm experimenting with a new kind of articulation peg. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more later in a bit more depth, but basically there's a new kind of articulation peg that I've made and you can't actually use it until the whole thing's finished and it slots together and then it don't come out. But I'll talk about it more later. There is still some of the old school stuff that I normally do though, like his backpack is just a push fit peg. That fits on really nice. We've also got his arms that are push fit pegs, but there's certain parts of it, his hips and his head that I won't be connecting until the very end. So, so far, really liking how this is looking. Without further ado, let's get it primed. Well, I'll actually wait till tomorrow morning because it's like 2 a.m. right now. So I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning when it's bright. But yeah, the next stage of this thing will be to get it primed. <laughs> Now, although at this point I was priming it, the sculpt wasn't actually finished, at least not as finished as I wanted it to be, because while sculpting it, there was something that I'd overlooked that I really wanted to get sorted before I put any more paint on it, and although it was a really small detail and something that a lot of people wouldn't even notice, it's something that were playing on my mind and I really wanted to try and get it sorted before I went any further. So as you'll know if you watch the start of this video, I had to really rush to get this sculpt finished in time for when Dan arrived. And looking back at it on retrospects, there was something on it that I missed off that I really wish that I didn't. And when I were looking at pictures of these Marines, I were like, oh, I really wish that I'd have added that. And I didn't want to go through the whole rigma of printing him out a new set of legs. So basically, over the past two nights, I've been working on something off camera, but I've printed it out. It fits perfect. I can't wait to show you. Look how good these look. I'm, I'm really impressed with these. <laughs> Now, when you look at these old boxes of Marines, or any Marine for that matter, around the bottom of their feet, they have these, not that, that's a Terminator. Around the bottom of their feet, they have these little ridges, like a little plate around the edge of them. And when I sculpted this guy's feet, I didn't do that. I just had them like go flat and smooth. And nobody would really notice, but me looking at them, like it was playing on my mind. I was like, I want to fix that. And if I can, then I will. So what I did over the last few nights is I sculpted and printed some of these. Now, these are just like little shoe plate kind of things that his feet can sit in and I printed these off in a few slightly different sizes because resin can warp when you're printing it and things but basically I made him a set that fit absolutely perfect check that now I've glued these on so I can't take them off and show you how satisfyingly well they fit but yeah you can see look how perfect they fit and they just really finish it off in my opinion I'm really glad that I added them like I said it were playing on my mind and if I print any more of these in the future which I'm sure I will I, uh, I'll just have these attached when they actually get printed out but yeah for like uh, saving these legs for the fact that I was able to save these legs without having to print a new set I'm very very happy so yeah now I can get these primed and we'll get him over to the spray booth and start getting some colour on him really excited that's what's going down today let's do this I want to talk about really quick as well before we start is what type of blue that I'm going to be using. So recently I got sent a bunch of paints from Pro Acryl, really liking those paints, but I couldn't find the exact type of blue that I need. So basically what I've got here is the original Enchanted Blue that came with the Warhammer set. Now this would have come out around the time of like the Mark 7 Ultramarine and that kind of thing. And this is the kind of colour that everyone would have been painting their Space Marines in. Now if you look at that next to that, it's very close, but it's not quite. So I'm thinking if I mix a little bit of this like lighter blue, this sky blue, with that, with the normal blue, I'll get something that's that kind of vibrant colour. I was also going to use a spray can for this and get everything based with one colour can of primer, but the other day when me and Dan went to Element Games, I couldn't find the right blue that I wanted. Colour Forge and Warhammer and stuff, they all do some really nice sprays, some really good ones, but they're all slightly darker than the colour that I want. Because normally what you would do is you would spray all this with a darker blue and then maybe dry brush on top of it and pick out some highlights and stuff. And that's the way that you would normally paint Warhammer, but I'm not doing that. I want this to look like an action figure, so I kind of need that perfect ultramarine blue right from the start. And when I say blue, I don't even just mean any ultramarine blue. I mean like specifically a really vibrant old hammer blue. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to mix some colours together, try and get a nice blue that kind of replicates that and uh, mix them in a little bottle here, put some thinner in it and then start airbrushing and get the whole thing covered. Now it took me a couple of attempts to get the blue that I wanted and I actually settled on one that was a little bit more bright and vibrant than the old school enchanted blue colour but I just really liked it and once I started laying it down on the figure I was very confident that it was going to be the perfect base for my retro ultramarine toy. 
Also, I haven't really mentioned this yet, but I decided to go with the classic ultramarine colour scheme and iconography for this figure, and some people might think that that were a boring option, and I get it because ultramarines are very much the poster boy of Warhammer 40k, and they're not even necessarily my favourite chapter or anything like that, but again, if you're thinking about this toy as if it was a legit 90s action figure release, I'm pretty sure that it would have been the ultramarines that they would have wanted for the first toy. There's also no denying as well that in terms of Space Marines, the blue of the Ultramarine is very iconic, it's a really renowned colour scheme, and whenever I think of old school Old Hammer 40k, it's usually them that's one of the first things that pops into my mind personally. And with how popping the blue colour was once it started to dry, I knew that I definitely made the right decision to go with this paint job. So after a bit of mixing, I feel like I got the perfect blue. Really, really happy with the colour of this thing. And I've saved a little bit in the bottle if I need to touch it up or anything like that. As I mentioned earlier though, I've not fit this thing together for a reason and it's because I've been working on a specific kind of new articulation peg. Now what I've got here are a bunch of little articulation pegs that I've already made and slotted together in various different versions, various different attempts and stuff. Basically just like a little snap kind of peg that I just designed in Nomad, the sculpting software that I use. I'll get some close-up shots of it so you can see it. But what I've done is I've made it so that you can just get one of them and push it in and then it'll lock into place. You'll never be able to take it out. And it's not like super strong. It wouldn't hold an arm like that with a weapon in it. It would just fall. But for stuff like the head peg and the waist peg, I'm confident that it'll work. And the reason that I have to do it like this, a specific kind of peg and not the same way that I'd do it if it was made out of like a kind of flexible resin like the Turgo toy that I made with Rainbow Yarn. The reason I have to do it like this is because this resin is very rigid it's very brittle and I have actually been looking into a new type of resin that a few people have put me onto it's got a lot more durability to it especially before you cure it and also kind of dries like plastic okay so like I said the new peg that I've made is even better than this this one might not even work but we will see go on lad <laughs> and we'll never get it out of there so I have to be careful that the paint doesn't wear off when I turn it but it shouldn't do the way that I designed it I think it's worked. So now with him in that perfect blue colour and with his arms and his head and his backpack and everything else all fitted into place, I could really see what this thing were going to be looking like. And without trying to big myself up too much, I was really impressed with it. So the next stage was to get the rest of his details painted in, starting with his white ultramarine logo and also this big white arrow, which I'll be honest, I'm not too familiar with the meaning of. But all the marines on the old ultramarine box that I've got have all got one on their shoulder. And also, according to my old How to Paint Space Marines book, makes him some kind of second company tactical marine. Now I were using the white two thin coats that had been sent for this, and although it did cover really well, I did have to lay it down in multiple layers before it started to look solid. Which is nothing to do with the paint, it was just because I were painting this over blue. So in retrospect, I should have probably sprayed these shoulder pads white and then painted in the blue on top of that, because I just feel like it would have made covering these emblems, and also the yellow trim that I did later just go on a lot easier. Now speaking of yellow, yellow is always a bit of a dodgy colour to paint with. I've never had much success with it unless I'm painting on like a perfect white base coat. So I knew that this next bit could have the potential to stress me out a bit. I also couldn't find a perfect yellow colour that I needed, almost like a gross yellow egg yolk colour. So I thought I'd combine the power of my two favourite paints, Pro Acryl and Two Thin Coats, and mix their two yellows together to get the perfect tone and hopefully one that gave me decent coverage. What's funny as well is that this should actually be gold. As far as I'm aware, it's blue and gold that these guys should be painted. But a lot of the time, back in the old school days of Warhammer, when they painted gold on figures, they used to use yellow. And I don't know if this is because it helped better advertise the simple base range of colours that were mostly available at the time. I'm sure someone in the comments could let me know for sure. And even though this is probably supposed to be gold, and I do have a bunch of really nice golds and metallics that have been sent, and they would also go down a lot easier over this blue, I decided to go with the OG yellow on this guy just for that perfect old school feel. So I'm about halfway through the paint job now, just doing the first layer of yellow. And you know when you're working on something and you just know that it's going to look awesome, you just know that it's going to look good? That's how I feel right now. That could all change, but as we speak, as of right now, I'm really happy with how this thing's looking. How it's all coming together. Looking fire. Not supposed to do that, but I do. <laughs> Thank you.
So with the paint job now well underway and with me really happy with how it were all looking, I spent the rest of the evening blasting out all of the other details, taking my time to lay down the other colours in nice thin coats to avoid any thick brush strokes or streaky coverage and trying to get him all finished for the following day where I could get him all lacquered and ready for his final reveal shots. There he is, my finished 90s inspired Space Marine action figure. And there's quite a few things that I've added to him that I didn't talk about in the video that I'll go through in a minute. But first of all, I want to talk about the finish that I gave him. I gave him a satin lacquer, and that's usually my go-to when I'm creating toys that I want to look like plastic. Sometimes it can change the colours a little bit. If you remember the last video that I did, the Raziel figure, the satin lacquer completely ruined that and I had to go back and paint over it. But it really, really worked well on this figure. Didn't dampen the blue or anything like that, which I was concerned with. And uh, yeah, gave it a real nice finish. For his weapons, I went with a classic chain sword and a bolter, and also I made his bolter look like it could actually fire a little missile. Because if this was released in the 90s, then let's be right, that's what they would have done. They would have put a missile in there, because all the toys in the 90s had firing missiles, like pretty much all of them. <laughs> Also, the colours that I chose for these weapons might look a little jarring, but they're kind of like purposely supposed to be ugly. If you think about those old toys like the Trendmaster Godzilla figures or the Kenner Batman toys, the Beast Wars, all those kind of figure lines all had like chrome weapons. It's like in the 90s they discovered this new technique to almost make plastic look like it was electroplated. The technique really hasn't stood the test of time. It can be very brittle, the chrome flakes off and stuff, but that's my little nod towards those old toys. And again, if this was made in the 90s, it's very likely that they would have use that technique on his weapons. I also wanted to talk about his scale as well. All the figures that I make, I like to create in the same scale to almost imagine that they was all like in a battle royal game together or they was all like in a beat em up or something. Like they was all in a big crossover game franchise like Fortnite. I wanted to make this guy a little bigger than my regular toys just because Space Marines are supposed to be like 10 foot tall. At least Firstborns are. Primaris are even bigger. But yeah, I wanted him to stand next to my toys and still look like he was the same scale, just a little bit bigger than him. See, look like this is Raziel that I created in the last video. And as you can see, he's not too much bigger but just a little bit bigger just to help tell the scale that space marines are like walking tanks next to a normal human. I also wanted to show you the scale difference between some like official space marine toy releases as well. So I've got here a joy toy and also one of the McFarlane toys and as you can see he kind of sits nicely in between them so if you was curious about the scale I went for that should hopefully answer the question. Now this is a toy that I think has a lot of potential. I'm a big fan of old toy lines that would take one book, like one book shape of a figure and then recolor it in different colors, add different heads and arms and stuff and create whole new figures. Mattel did it with the Masters of the Universe line for years and it always really worked. Some companies do it lazily, but some do it right. And I think that this really has the potential to be that kind of figure where you can change it different colors, put different weapons in its hands, different shoulder pauldrons and all that kind of thing. And at the start of this video, I said how I would like to create like one or two or three of these or something like that so although i only showed you me making the ultramarine in true blue peter fashion i wanted to show you a couple that i also made earlier off camera check these <laughs> So what I've got here are a Blood Angel, an old school Blood Angel, and then what I think is a Blood Angel Intercessor. Looking at that old book that I've got, that How to Paint Space Marines, there's a colour scheme in there that I really liked. This is not exactly the same, it's kind of different, like I did my own thing with it, and you can do that with Warhammer and Space Marines and stuff like create your own colour schemes and chapters. But I think these are an awesome example of what you can do by taking that book and then switching it up and painting it different colours and that kind of thing. What I did is I took these legs and I flipped them around the other way, created new shoulders for it, a new head for this guy. Like I talked about in the video earlier, I like the old school Beaky Marine, so I wanted to incorporate that. And that's something else that you can do. You can take one of those Beaky Marines and put it on this kind of body. Uh, you can do what you want with Warhammer. Everything's canon, apparently. But I wanted to do a little homage to that because I really like that look. I also gave him the old studded shoulder pad and his weapon. Oh, he's not got his missile in. Let me get his missile. 
His weapon is based on one that I saw on Google called an Inferno Pistol. I'm not too familiar with the weapon, but I just like the look of it, so I gave him a different weapon. And you can switch the hands around and hold weapons in different hands and stuff, so he has got the chainsaw, but then he's also got a gun in another hand. This guy is an old school Blood Angel. I got the red from Pro Acryl Red. Really, really nice red that they use. It's the same one that I used on Toe Jam and Earl. And it just makes me think how much potential there is here now to take this book and spray it in different colours and do different heads and weapons and shoulder pauldrons. Even doing jetpacks and stuff on them and like creating a whole line of them. It's something I'd really, really love to do. Like I've really got the bug for these at the minute. And also, I think in terms of trying to create a prototype of an action figure for a Space Marine toy line from the 90s that never was, that would be made by Trendmaster or Kenner or Playmates or something like that, I think that they turned out really good. I I'm really happy with them and I'd love to know what you think. Now at the start of this video as well, I also talked about how my friend Dan does came over and I wanted to print one for him to paint. Now when he got here, that whole thing like kind of went out of the window and this is why. Check this. So I did print him a Space Marine, I did print him one out, I did finish it in time like I said, but the one that I printed him was way too big. Look at the size of this guy. So I got all the scale measurements wrong, I also printed this thing solid so it's like really really heavy. And that would have all been fine, that would have not been a problem, I could have given this to Dan. But because it was so big and we was in such a rush, I didn't cure this for long enough so every time we tried to paint it, the resin seeped through the spray paint and cracked and that kind of thing and it was just a disaster. Now I did manage to fix it with filler primer and stuff but that was like once he'd left and things. So we was here and we did get one ready to paint and stuff and we spent a long time trying to get this guy to work but it just wasn't happening. So I went back and I printed him a proper size one but he didn't have time to paint it before he left. So he wrapped that up and he took it home and that's now something that he's going to be showcasing on his channel very soon. So I'll put the link to his channel down below if you're not already following it. He's going to be sticking that in a video very soon and like I said he comes from that like wargaming traditional painting background. He'll be doing a lot of dry brush and ink washes and rust and all that kind of thing and I'm really excited to see his take on the project. I've also spoke to a couple of my other YouTube creator friends as well that are going to get one of these and paint it and maybe put it in a video and stuff. So if there's any YouTube creators that you think would nail one of these that would do a really good job on it and you'd like to see their take on the sculpt then please tag them down below because maybe they'll want to paint one and maybe we can work something out and maybe I can send them one. Now like I've said a few times, I think this is a project with so much potential and when you start thinking about potential characters that you could create from Warhammer 40k, there's so many that you could look at. You could do Eldar, Necrons, I would love to make a Tyranid in this style. You could do Orcs, you could do Tau, there's like an unlimited possibilities and that's not even getting to Warhammer Fantasy, that's a whole different thing. But something I would love to do, something that I would really, really, really like to do at some point is build a Dreadnought in this scale. So probably be about this big, a full size Dreadnought, old school Dreadnought, that's like one of my favourite robot designs ever and I think I would uh, really really like to take up that challenge. So if that's something that you'd like to see then please let me know. Also in this video you might have seen I showed some of my old hammer collection. Now I've got a huge collection of Warhammer and old hammer and related stuff box stuff, loose stuff, all that kind of thing and I'd love to showcase it in a video. So if that's something else that you would like to see then please let me know down below because I'm more than happy to get all that stuff out because I just like the excuse to do it. <laughs> But if you enjoyed this video today, please don't forget to give it a like. And if this is your first time checking out the channel, then you're very welcome. I'm Theo Kane. I try and do videos every single week. So if you like the vibe of this video, you're probably going to like the other stuff that I do. So feel free to also go back and binge the back catalogue. And let me know down in the comments below who you are, how you found us, where you're from, what you collect. And yeah, welcome to Slimehouse TV. I also do have a Patreon and an Amazon wishlist. I'll put all those links down below. They help me create these videos, help me keep the lights on here at Slimehouse HQ and uh, basically help me to keep living my dream and I love what I'm doing and I've got so many ideas and I'm so hungry and there's so many different things I've got with so much potential that I want to keep doing on the channel. So all that really, really does help. We have a private Discord where we talk about toy collecting, toy making, all that kind of thing. You can also join that. That's one of the perks of joining the Slime Alliance tier. And also, when I do do a toy release, not ones like this. These are not for sale. Don't sue me, Games Workshop. These are just for me. But when I do toys that are for like sale and offer production runs and stuff, the people over on the Patreon and the Discord, they get first priority from now on as well. So yeah, just a few perks that you get from joining the Slime Alliance Patreon. But in the meantime, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody that's joined me today, everybody that helped me with this video. Shouts to Jordan Sorcery over on the Jordan Sorcery YouTube channel. He was very helpful when I hit him up and asked him for like some information about the armor and that kind of thing. I also want to shout out Dan Does and Bill Making Stuff and Craftsman and Tinu who were all on video call when I were discussing this idea, thinking if it were worth doing or not. And they really like give me the push to think, yeah, this could be an awesome idea. 
And as always, I want to shout out you lot for checking out this video today. With all the other stuff that you can be watching on YouTube, it really does mean a lot that you come back here every single week and watch my little channel where I make weird action figures. So I really appreciate it and I hope to catch you in the next one. But until then, I'm Theo Kane, this is Slimehouse TV, and I'm gone. Pa!